Hey Math 31, I had a question for section 3.6, number 37. And the directions here said, if possible, find all values of A such that there are no y-intercepts. So before we get into this too far, let's just review the concept of y-intercepts. This is going to be one of those traits that we find repeatedly in this class. But whenever I want to find a y-intercept, I'm going to let x be equal to 0 and solve for y. So let me give you a for instance for this function in 37. Let's just pretend that I let a be equal to 3. So let's put an actual a value together. So f of x would be equal to 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 3. Well then, if I found f of 0, because I let x be equal to 0, that would be 2 times, oops, excuse me, the absolute value of 0 plus 1 plus 3, which would be 5. So I would ultimately say that my y-intercept was the ordered pair 0, 5. So this is an example of where I found an a value, specifically positive 3 here, or 3, and I, I came up with a y-intercept. And, and this problem in 37 is asking us to do just the opposite. It says find any of these a values such that there are no y-intercepts. So before we address that, for that question for this specific problem, I want to again do a little bit of scratch work and I want to talk about, I want to give you an example, I should say, of a function that has no y-intercepts. So let's say our function had been 1 over x. All right, and I want you to imagine finding a y-intercept here. I would still let x be 0 and I would get 1 over 0, which we've talked about before, that that value does not exist. And I've mentioned this before, but it's great to mention it again, that we have three domain issues in math. All right, we have the case where we have fractions and the denominator is zero. We have another domain issue when we have radical functions with even indices, right? When the index is even, but the radicand is negative. And then we also have logarithmic functions, logarithm, let me spell it. We have logarithmic functions, and we run into problems there when the argument is zero or negative. And at least for this function I gave you here, we got tripped up on fractions, right? We couldn't put a zero in that denominator, so I would say there were no y-intercepts here, or y-intercept singular. If you have a function, you only have one y-intercept. So here's an example of a function that has no y-intercepts. And, and just as note, this is one of your toolkit functions. All right, so let me just put a little note here. This is a toolkit function. If you don't know what I'm referring to, head to page 174 of your book. All right, so if I put up the equation of a toolkit function, like y equals x or y equals x squared or the square root of x, you should have a basic idea of what this graph will look like. Um, before, without doing any calculations. We want to know what the graphs of our toolkit functions look like. All right, now let's get to 37. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try and find this y-intercept. I'm going to let x equal 0. So you see me substituting in 0 for x, and I work through the algebra here, and I, I arrive at this expression. All right, now if we take a look at this expression, 2 plus a, it's not a fraction. Right? It is not a radical and it is not a logarithm. So what that means is that I don't have any domain issues here. So that's why you see in my answer that there is no value of a that will keep this function from having a y-intercept. So regardless of what you make this a value, you will have a y-intercept at 0, 2 plus a, right? So your y-intercept will always be the ordered pair 0, 2 plus a. And you saw that play out, right? I'll, I'll re-highlight it. We picked 3 here, right? Or well, what would 2, oops, that's not the right pen. Let's do this. What would 2 plus 3 leave us with? If a was 3, well, that would leave us with 5. So you saw that play out in real time. So the solution for 37 in and of itself is that there were no a values, right? And the phrasing in the question said, if possible, find the values of a. Well, it's not possible. And I wanted to give you a counterexample, which is why I actually work through number 36 as well. So I said, if you were interested in stopping x-intercepts, which is what number 36 asked of us, 
we could play that out too. Now, x-intercepts are a little bit different. To find an x-intercept, you actually need to let y equal zero. So you're gonna let your function zero out, and you see me th doing that right here. I let my function zero out, and because I have an absolute value equation, the first thing I need to do is isolate the absolute value term. And you see me isolating that absolute value term or that expression, and I arrive at this equation. All right, now one thing that we have to remember about absolute values is that whatever comes out of them has to be positive. So I can infer that negative a over two has to be greater than or equal to zero if we want x-intercepts to exist. But the thing is, we wanna stop x-intercepts, right? That's what 36 was asking us to do. So if a, excuse me, if negative a over two means x-intercepts, ooh, let me get the pen going, x-intercepts exist, all right, then x-intercepts would not exist, which is what we're looking for, if the opposite is true. And what is the opposite of something being greater than or equal to zero? Well, it's that thing, in this case negative a over two, being less than zero. And so that's where I'm coming up with this inequality here. And then what I did was I multiplied by negative two on both sides. And don't forget that when you multiply by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality. So you see me going from less than to greater than, and when you wind up solving this, you're left with the inequality a is greater than zero. So if I was looking for values of a where there were no x-intercepts, I would pick any positive a value. And to go back to where we were before, if you remember back up here, I chose, let me change the color, I chose a being three. So by the, the work I just did for number 36, yes, my y-intercept, ooh, that erased, I didn't wanna do that, excuse me. Yes, my y-intercept was at zero five, but because this was positive, I also know there were no x-intercepts. And try graphing this on your calculator. You're gonna see that it never crosses the x-axis because really I've been shifted left one and up three. So that, that V shape for that absolute value, it's never gonna cross the x-axis. All right, I hope that helps. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you later, bye.